animals for our worship and our praise. Okay? Now we're relying on ourselves. Remember the Bible talks about us. Remember that concept in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 3 about what being living sacrifices. Right? Right? And then he talks about what? Holy. Right, Tommy? Acceptable. Right? So, you, so, so when God calls us to be sacrifices, he's not saying that we're just, just supposed to be just any type of thing, Sister Mary, right? We have to be what? Different, right? What's the word sanctify mean? It means what? Separate, right? 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 So when, so when God says you're sanctified, you know, Sister Loretta, that basically means what? That means we set apart, right? Set apart what? For God, right? But I like that because, you know, sometimes I think, some of us, not all, but some of us, we think praise only activates when we get here, and then we have to deactivate it, right, when we leave here. But I just dropped by to tell you something today, family, that praise, what, is all the time. Yeah, yeah, right? I praise God this morning for waking up. I praise God my toothache. It was hard. <laughs> it was hard, right? But, but, but Jalea praise doesn't stop, right? And... and Here's the question. Does praise come in different forms? Right? Right? Can, can, can we, right, the way Cecil prays versus the way Glenn prays and Tommy or the way Brother Jocka I praise and Sister Wendy prays, but, we, but what? Vastly different. Right? Circumstances, right, can play in the part right there. Luke 19 and 40, right? Oh, go ahead, Charles. What you going to say? No, he has, I think he had a first. Uh, go ahead, Brother Garbo. Go ahead, oh, brother. I, 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 go ahead brother. I'm sorry, well, brother. I, I was just going to say that, you know, we do in the church, we use this verse to argue uh, for the uh, singing a cappella music, yes. even though uh, that does restrict what we're talking about now. Praise goes beyond uh, just singing. Mm -hmm. You know, like you said, there's several different uh, ways that we can praise God. And this is a, a theme that uh, the Hebrew writer revisits that had already talked about in uh, verse Hebrews 2.12, and I want to read it because I think it's interesting. Yeah, it ahead. says, um, saying that I will declare thy name unto my brethren mm -hmm. in the midst of the church, yeah. I will sing praise unto thee. Right. Now, we have a more stronger association with singing here, but yeah. we get it right there as well in addition to all the other things that we do uh, that add up to uh, praise, you know, getting up in the morning. Well, we were praising God this afternoon because of the beautiful rainbow. You know, I mean, how can you not think about how magnificent God is yeah. when, you know, he shows that bow to us again. So, hey, we're praising, we were praising, we was having church on the way up here just mm -hmm. talking about the rainbow. Yeah. Right, right, right. Well, good point. Uh, now, what verse did you just read? Yeah, was Hebrews 2 12. 2 12, okay, okay. That, that was a good verse. Go ahead, Charles, do you have something? Brother, long as God get the praise, whatever for me coming, long as he get the praise, yeah. and nobody else, because it's only for him. Amen. They say praise to God, mm -hmm. and that's Amen. where all our praise should go unto. Not oh, nothing yeah. else, nothing material, but unto God who is beginning and the end of everything that's created with him. Right. And, you know, and people, and, 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 and what's so funny, and I appreciate that, Charles, that's a good point, because people may say, well, how elementary can somebody be to, to, to redirect their praise to someone other than God. But it happens. Does it not happen, family? Yeah, it happens, right? Right? You know, this is this exhibit A, right, Glenn, the world. Right? They praise what? Anything and everything. Depending on the ism, right? But that doesn't that doesn't negate the fact that if we look internally within the church, sometimes accidentally Right, we can find ourselves, and even sometimes deterministically, we can find ourselves praising other things. What did, what did, what did uh, Paul write to the church at Philippi in chapter two of Philippians? He said, "What? Don't do anything. What for vain glory? Right? Self-seeking. Right? Right? That's why. That's why I think I said one time I preached. I think I said, Sister Carolyn, intent matters. Intent, Sister Mayfield, matters." Because your intent is reinforced by your motive. And the outcome of what you're trying to do all starts with the foundation of what do you have here? Intent, right? And so we got to be careful, family. So even sometimes in the church, we, we can find ourselves 
overly praising people. Right? Does that, does that not happen? Yeah. yeah. Right? Right? Now let me say this. Now the Bible talks about giving honor to whom honor is due. Right? I had said a couple of Wednesdays ago, if you want to have an appreciation for somebody, you can do that. You are honoring somebody. But there's a difference between honoring and overly praise. Is there a difference? Yes, yeah, a difference. Yeah, yeah. You got to get your microphone done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't help but think about Herod in yeah, Acts, yeah, yeah. 12, Acts 12, 22, when he tried to accept praise. People said the voice of God yeah. and not of a man. That's and right. then his guts just fell out right there. The Bible says because he did give glory to God. That's right. That's right. And, and, and what, was, what was the offense that Herod did? This was the offense, right? And this is what happened to a lot of men today and even sisters too. When, when you know somebody is saying something to you, right, and they got you up here, when you belong, when you belong right here, <laughs> y'all didn't, didn't get there. Let me say it, let me, let me say it from the side view. <laughs> right. When they got you up here, when they have pedalized you, that's not a word, I just made that up. Amen. They put you on a pedal, right? Yeah, yeah, put you on a pedal. And, and, and and what happened was, right, you can't tell the story, brother. You already dropped the text. Right, yeah. You know, so so Herod, he got cleaned up. <laughs> he had his he had his, his king bling on. Jalea, he was looking good. B Bible said that now now historians say, jo Josephus says that whatever he had on, when the sun hit it, Sister John, it was strong and shiny. So basically it put off this aura, Sister Wright, this 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 vibe, this this uh this, this outwardly appearance to where he almost looked like a, a big old reflector, right? They never seen nothing like that before, right? And they started talking about how godly he looked, and he did not say a word. And God slipped in heaven and said, I ain't having that. <laughs> yeah, he fixed that right in the spot. That's why I tell people, I say, God can fix things down the line. God can fix things soon. And God then can accelerate Right then in the moment, right? Yeah, on the spot. And so, but the point I'm trying to make, family, is that, you know, we just have to just, what, keep pointing our praise to the right place. Amen? Any questions or comments on verse 15? Oh, oh, this is your sister made for the mic. And while we're doing that, let's, go, let's also go to Psalms 50 and 23. Psalms 50 and 23. <laughs> okay. When you were talking about praising, I, I remember distinctively uh, being in a denominational mm -hmm. and even coming into the gospel, how I would wake up early in the morning, 2 or 3 o'clock, could not go back to sleep for no time at all. And this was just a continuous thing. Mm -hmm. And I kept wondering, why can't I sleep? Why can't I sleep? Right, right. But then when you start to grow, you start to read, you start to meditate, you start to grow into who your maker is. Yeah. And what he's done for you. Right, right. I remember just one night vividly, something came to me and said, pray. And I prayed and it says, okay, Give praises to God. So after then, it was like, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. If I wake up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. it's a very good time for me and God to have a conversation. There's nothing distracting me. Mm -hmm. there are no I'm not going to turn on the television or anything. Mm -hmm. Just me and him having a conversation mm -hmm. and me giving him praise for just the the bad things, yeah. the good times, mm -hmm. and if I wake up in the morning for what you're going to do in the future. Mm -hmm. So, but you learn and you do better. You right. grow. Right, right. That's, that's a good point. And I also believe this too, family, that we have to be as leaders. Oh, leaders by the way, after then, I can sleep like a baby. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> you, you can count sheep, huh, sister? Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, 
we as Christians, we, we have to be the connoisseurs of praise. And we also have to, as lead, leaders and as, as, as the overall body of Christ, we have to also be, understand, be the gatekeepers of praise. And what that, means, what that basically means, let me explain, is that we have to make sure we, we always stay in that right balance. I don't, I don't, I don't get, I don't get how the extreme on both levels, right? You know, to to a very legalistic hermeneutic, or you can be extreme to just going bonkers and crazy, right? Yeah. Right. And so, I, I we we got to definitely find strike that right balance uh, for praise. I'm surprised, Brother Jock can't say to ask the question, well, Brother Brady, what's the right balance for praise? <laughs> Look, you got it. <laughs> right, but we have to we have to strike that right balance, right? And so, uh, who has Psalm fifteen twenty three? Who want to read real quick? Okay, Psalm fifteen twenty three. I can I can go Google it and find it. Mm-hmm. Right. Amen. Right. So, so the the praise is not wasted, right? And it's not voided, right? God said He's pleased with. It. Now, does, now does God need our praise? No, we don't need our praise, right? Anything can praise. That's why I like Luke nineteen and forty so much, is because you know you know Jesus said, look, if, if y'all don't want to do it, these inanimate objects will. <laughs> they will, right? Yeah. Now, 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 I refuse to let a rock out praise me. I refuse that. Right. Right. Especially when the rock is not living in, you know, the abyss of the human experience like I am. Right. Rock don't have emotions. Rock don't understand pain. Rock don't understand the apex of joy. Right. We do. Rock doesn't have critical thinking, you know, and, and deductive reasoning, right? And, and, and has rationale and intellect. We do. And the rock don't got a soul, family. We do. Yeah, and you gonna let a rock out praise you? I refuse, Sister Kelly. <laughs> no, can't be. Uh -uh. So I, I get why, you know, Jesus said they said, look, y'all don't want to do it. Guess what? These things that, that, that don't talk at all will. <laughs> yeah. And, that's bad, yeah, that's powerful. That's why, you know, when you but when you look at 1940, what what God is what, what God is saying, and Christ is saying rather in that text is that not only is God worthy, but somebody's gonna praise him anyway. Yeah, right? Gonna Somebody's gonna praise him, yes, right? Sir. So um go ahead, sister, you got something? She she got one. She got one. Uh, I just wanna say that, you know, in verse of verse twenty-three. It says, uh, whoso, whoso offered praise glorifieth me. Mm -hmm. And we can also do that through our talk, yes, right. our singing, yes. and our attitude. Because that, our attitude plays a lot toward glorification of God. Even if we don't say nothing, our attitude shows how we feel toward God. Right. So we have to think of that as well, singing talking, and our attitudes. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's a good point, sister. Anybody else on verse 15? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Doc. Well, well only uh, in, since, you, since you brought up 4019, uh, you know, the setting is very significant in, in Jesus' ministry because this is the triumphant entry. That's you right. know, they saying Hosanna to God in the highest and everything, and here come the praise police yeah. trying to shut down the worship. They saying that, and they said, no, don't you do that. Yeah. And that's what made Jesus say that. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's powerful, and it ought to give us more courage and confidence to praise God and be ready for the opposition that we're going to get, you know, because people don't want us praising God. They don't even want God, uh, you know, spoken about, you know, on the job or wherever we go. Oh, but, yeah. hey, no, because we don't want the rocks to outdo us, yeah. you know, or any other inanimate object. Yeah, and, 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 you know, you made a great point because, you know, we also cannot allow anybody in the world 
to limit our God or, or try to walk us back. Yeah. Well, you know, Jesus, you know, he, he was a good man. Don't you put him in the same class uh, as, as, as others? Now, 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 Moses was a good man. Oh, yeah. John the Baptist was a good man. Paul was a good man. But, but Jesus in the class all by himself. Yeah, so don't, 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 try, to, don't try to just say he does anybody now. No, 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 no. You ain't going to my Lord. No, no. He's a savior. He's my shepherd. Yeah. And so, and so we have to also stand by that line and say, no, yeah. we're not going to do that. No, he wasn't just some, some, some marvelous humanitarian worker. No, he is the son of God. Yeah, the point of this book. That's right. Absolutely. So, so and, and that's also praise too, because why? We are confessing him before men. Okay. And so we have to constantly do that out here out in the world, but also, too, we have to constantly also do it uh, within our Christian journey and also our Christian worship as well. So, anybody else on verse 15? Then you smiling. <laughs> yeah. I was probably Tommy ain't got something to say on this one. This is praise right here, baby. Yeah. Okay, we're going to move on? All right. Indeed, indeed, sir. <laughs> verse 16 Doing good and sharing. Who want to read verse 16? What does verse 16 say? Go ahead, sister. Let's just get you the microphone. Who's reading? Okay. Go ahead, sister. But to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. What does it mean to do good? Okay. And I like how he says, he says, but do not for what? Forget to do good. Right. Uh, and and that's sometimes that's something we, you know, we as children of light, we can be in, we can be so churchy for so long. We can be churchy for so long that we forget where we come from, right? Yeah. What, 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 what do you mean, brother Bray? I'm glad y'all asked. I'll explain. Yeah, yeah. So so you you know, we we can get so comfortable thinking that. Nobody needs anything, right? We get so comfortable in ceremony, right? But not in righteousness. But what did Jesus tell the Pharisees? You know, he said mercy is better than sacrifice. You know, you, you want to show up and go through the monotony of a routine, right? But what's the use of this attending, but you're not aspirational in righteousness, right? What's the use of showing up, right? When you're not actually going to uh, take what you learn, what God has poured into you, and then redirect it out to those who what, are in need. Go ahead, Tommy. Yeah, I, was, I was looking at the first part of 16. Mm -hmm. It's about to do good. Now, we can do good in, in a lot of things. Oh, yeah. But are we doing good according to God's plan? Uh, you know, in the early days, you know, everybody did what they thought was good in their own way. That's right. But we weren't doing according to God's uh, will. That's right. That's right. You know, we, and that's good because God has his standard, and that's it. That settles it, right? You know, if you're outside that scope, right, if you're living according to your standard, then you what? You, you, you're, not, you're not living to, you're not, you're not in line with God. You're out of alignment, right? You have to live according to his standard. His standard. You know, when, 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 when God says, I need you to love your enemies and pray for them, right? But then you go ahead, you take the text, and you, you go ahead and just remaster it <laughs> and say, I, I love those who love me. Right? I respect those who respect me. But that's the standard, though. I forgive when I, feel, when I, get, when I get ready to, when I, when, I, when I feel comfortable to forgive. No, it's not the standard. Right? I, love, I love my circle. I, learn, I, learn, I love my tribe. <laughs> <laughs> right? But but anybody else who's out of that scope, they ain't gonna get the same kind of love. That's not is that biblical? Right? And the Pharisees, they were notorious for that, right? You know? How many times did Jesus have to have to call them out on tradition? Plenty of times. Right? He, he said, Y'all added so many things, it's ridiculous. And so, and so, you know, to your point, Tommy, we have to make sure that. We are in the construct of what, what God says, right? And we live in that domain, okay? Anybody else on verse 16? Let's get your microphone, Doc. 
That's okay. I need it. I don't. I don't think that we should pass by that word communicate. Yeah, which means, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, walking back there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, 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 go ahead. Okay, go, ahead. go ahead and work it. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go well, ahead. well, it's just that that word is important in our Christian, you know, lexicon. I mean, it carries the idea of fellowship. Yep. You know, participation. Yes, sir. Uh, social intercourse. Yep. And and uh, it really uh, builds the body life of the community, yeah. the family, when we do good by through fellowship. Mm -hmm. because this is what pleases God. I mean, on a very basic level, when we are sharing, when we're communicating, when we're participating and showing concern for one another, we're, you know, functioning in the highest level of fellowship. Yeah. You know, it's what makes us one. And, you know, that's a good point because, you know, one of the things that made, you know, um, the early church really successful in their ministry was the idea that they truly had bought into the investment of fellowship, right? They, they knew what it was, they understood it, and they were all bought in. Yes, sir. And what fellowship does, family, when you get people together for and, and over multiple opportunities of fellowship and multiple sessions and sync ups, activities, events, and then, and then already by default, you have what? We worship together, we praise together. What that does is that gives us a rapport like no other. But when we, but, but I can't imagine us you know, showing up here at 1030, no one not saying a word to each other, and then just leaving here at 1230 or 1245, not saying a word to each other. That's doing, that's doing a disservice to the body, yeah. right? No communication, no fellowship. Yeah. Right? No relationship. Well, well, here's the thing. Would you, would you not say, this is a question for you, not only for C, but everybody, though. Would you not say that fellowship is the precursor to relationship? Right? Yeah. right? I would say, yeah. right? Yeah. Because, because if you don't get together, right, you can't stay together. Right, right. There's no right? spiritual connection. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, sister. So is that communicate mean just within the body? Mm. Yeah, so, so they're, just, they're just talking, up. yeah, so that's a good question. So, so in this case, the context basically is to do good to everybody, right? Now, the communicate part basically means that when we do good, when we communicate, and also it, it, it becomes a sacrifice, it becomes another form of sacrifice to God, okay? Like for example, you know, when Remember I told you about how we're living sacrifices, right? We don't have to tie down the animals and give the blood to God anymore, right? And allow the aroma of the animal to God to please him. It's the righteous deeds and works of us being holy in this human experience. That what pleases God, right? And so, and so um, but remember, right? Here's the question. Somebody can say, well, well, well we know we're, we're the body of Christ. So does that mean that we, we're special and unique? We are special and unique, right? And we're supposed to. The Bible talks about how we're supposed to behave in this particular spiritual fraternity, okay? But also the Bible says do good unto all men. Right. Okay? Right. Yeah, but I was getting to that. That's right. But especially, right? Why, why the word especially? Why that word? Because why? Because there is a special kinship. Yeah. An affinity that we have yeah. as what? For one another. Yeah. Right? You know, that's why when Paul says, why y'all suing each other? Ain't y'all supposed to be Christian folk? Yeah. <laughs> Ain't y'all supposed to be church family? Yeah. Yeah. Why y'all suing each other? Yeah. I did anyone sue each other. What's wrong with y'all in Corinth, right? Because y he's saying, look, because who you are and because you identify as someone who is in the kingdom of God, kingdom people move different and because we move different we solve our issues differently right what, what, what does this make to the world when we, you tell the world to forgive the world don't understand about forgiveness that's a concept that's foreign to them the world understands retaliation retribution vindictiveness right but when you when, when a christian child of god right can tell somebody in the courtroom that even though you killed my brother i forgive you that's a concept that, that runs, the world don't understand that concept. But because we move different, right? Our disposition is different. And because Christian perspective is different, we, our outcomes and how we go about doing the things we do are different, okay? So yes, to answer your question, yes, that's for everybody. 
Okay, that's for everybody. Okay. Uh, any other questions on verse 16? Anybody else? Okay. Let's read Matthew 25 and 35 and 40. I want to refresh your memory. Let's see how many people remember the sermon last Sunday. It's only, it's, it's only been 72 hours. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it's only been 72 hours. Matthew 25, 35, and 40. Whoever have a microphone and ready to read. For I was hungry, and you gave me meat. Is, is ring a bell? Mm -hmm. I was thirsty, and you gave me what? Drink. Drink. I was a stranger, and you did what? Took me in. Verse 36. Naked, and you what? I was sick, and you did what? Visit me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. 37. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, we, when saw we thee a, a hunger, and fed thee, a thirsty, and gave thee drink? Remember I said that, that, that Dorcas had a least than ministry? I said, that was her ministry. Yeah, she caught her out a little niche and said, you know what? I'm going to soak for these folks here in Joppa. <laughs> I'm going to put love and joy and peace and, and piety and all these things. These but ultimately, I'm going to sow love in their hearts. And you know, you, you know she was missed, uh, uh, Brother Glenn, when they were up there and they were, they were wailing it because in the east of the mind, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't cry and those nothing. They wailed. They hollered. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine them at room filled, Sister Mary, all those sisters in there talking about Peter, did you know what she did for me? Yeah. Let me tell you something. When you send two people to go, go get somebody to raise her back up, that, that means she's special. Now, they wouldn't send nobody. That means they, they, they don't care. She was gone. <laughs> uh, uh, do, do we go get to the uh, apostle? Nah, we can let this one slide. <laughs> <laughs> but but y'all know what I'm saying, family, is that this right here is about doing good. Doing good. And remember I said the church effect on Sunday. The community needs the church effect. It needs the church effect. Part of us mobilizing and giving that out is what? Members shining the what? The, what? the light of God into this world, into this area, into this city here, right? What does it mean to be an example to other people, right? Okay. Questions? Verse 16, questions, comments? And you know what I like about this too is that what? This confirms that what? Because we're kingdom people and we have kingdom values, we're confirming what? That God's, that we not only believe in God's values, but we also practice them. That's right. right? We demonstrate them. We stand on, on them. Right? Amen. All right. Verse 17. Obeying and submitting to leaders. Let's read verse 17. Anybody? Obey them that have a rule over you, and submit yourself, for they watch for, the, for your soul, else they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, mm -hmm. for that is unprofitable for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, let me say this. You know, one thing about, I always said about um, church leaders, even if you don't always agree with them, they, got, they definitely have to be honored and esteemed, right? Even if there's a, someone I don't agree with, I still respect that person. They're in that role. Now, if it's the leadership so bad to where they're causing problems, you have a choice to leave, right? But you can honor them by leaving, right, and letting God deal with that by trying to be, be this one-on-one -on -one reckless mission <laughs> to take down the leaders. No. Let me tell you something about leaders. When leadership act out, God know how to fix that. Yeah. God replaces people. God dies out people, <coughs> excuse me, early. <laughs> he retire folk. 
Yeah. You know, uh, the people, you know, he had a, the church rise up and say, look, this is enough. We can't have this. Right. So. So. But that's if a leader just gone crazy. Right. Right. You know, you know, leaders gone wild. <laughs> right. So. But but in the but in the sense that they're, if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. even if you don't like something here or there, mm -hmm. they got to be respected. Yeah. Right. And this ties into the fact also about authority in the world. Right. Your job, mm -hmm. the military. Okay, uh, uh, the workplace, uh, the schools. You know, when there's people who who are in positions of authority that, that are over you, they have, you have to respect that. You have to respect that. And if you don't, and if the person doesn't have, uh, if the person uh, behavior is not matching what they do, you can still expect the, respect the, the role, but not respect their behavior. Right. You can respect that. You can separate the two. He ain't acting like a such and such. Yeah. I respect the role of a principal, but he ain't acting like a principal. Okay? I don't respect that behavior. Okay? You don't want to use the word hate, right? No. I hate that person. No, I don't. I dislike his ways. I just like uh, he or she's ways. Yeah, hate's a strong word. We never should never get in the jacuzzi of hate. So you get in that pool, that's a pool hard to get out of. And, it, and I'm gonna tell you something: you hating people is a poison. Yeah. <laughs> it will tear you up long term. Yeah. You got, a, you, got a, you got a mic, brother? Yes, I'm talking about, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm saying, it, 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 I'm saying, it will tear you up over time, right, when you hold on to the bottle of strife, right? When you want to continue to weaponize bitterness, right, and, 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 you know, and hatred, right, and vitriol for your brother and sister. You can't do that forever. Somewhere, somewhere down the line, you're going to have to grow. Forgive. And move on. Go ahead, Doc. You know, the Hebrew writer actually has already set this up because he yeah. started this idea in verse 7. Mm -hmm. uh, what does he say? He says, yeah. remember them which have the, there's that word again, mm -hmm. rule over you. Over you, that's spoken right. spoken to you in the word of God. That's right. Whose faith uh, follow considering the end of their conversation. That's right. In other words, you're looking at their life. That's right. And it matches up. And we also have to remember now, as leaders, they are going to incur a higher standard oh, of yeah. judgment. Oh, yeah. So, so, you know, this verse really requires a lot of faith. It does. Because, as you just said, sometimes we don't agree with the decisions that come from leadership. Mm -hmm. We may not agree with them, but we respect the role that God has put them in there. And we have to have faith that God is going to handle it. Mm -hmm. You know, unless they just get too crazy. And right, then, right, right. You know, right. you have to, you know, say well, either I got to move or I got to have Brother Brady, we need to talk because there's yeah, something going absolutely. on and I, I can't worship yeah. here with it like that. Right, right, right. And, and, that, make, and that makes sense. But, but when somebody chooses to topple, I'm going to topple this regime, right? Because they acting crazy. <laughs> no, no. And, and, and let me tell you something. You know, I always tell people, they always say, well, you know, um, you know, well, elders tell the church, preachers tell the church too. Oh, yeah. A lot of preachers tore up the church. Okay? It ain't just elders, right? Yeah. Leaders have tore up the church. Right. Okay? Yeah. There have been deacons that tore up the church. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? So, so we have to quit trying to carve out or, or whose role is the one who's, who's the causality of the church. But no, it's leadership in general, right? And so what we have to do is, as leaders, we have to recognize that we have to continue to grow too. Now you said that, you, I mean, you made a great point about faith. I would add this too. People need to mature in their faith so they can truly understand that just because, right, a leader makes a decision that I don't particularly like, I would have did something different. Well, you may not have all the facts. You may not have all the understanding of what, why they made that decision. But it's what you can do once you go to that person. And say, brother, brother, so so. Why? I'm just curious about something. Why? You know, uh, you know, I know y'all just y'all just did this, but 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 how did y'all come to the outcome? That's a beautiful thing. What did, what did, what did Isaiah say? Let us reason together. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's talk about it, right? Right, right. But it does. But but it's it's not. What do I say? It's not productive or conducive when you go to 50 people and you 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 just you display your displeasure with it, but you don't have, but you don't know why they did why they did that. Right, so it's good that we talk about it, family. Right, it's good that we talk about. It. But but leaders, you know, leaders they have a responsibility. It's a heavy weight. Go ahead, brother Tom. Yeah, I think brother God we had part of this here, 
But but he did say it with joy. You do with joy, not with grief. Yeah. See, sometimes we are disagree and we have the grief about it. That's right. But if you disagree with it, you know, it's all right. But yeah. do it with, with joy. Let that joy step that place and take away that grief and that hate. That's right. Because one thing about it, elders are not going to do stuff to satisfy, satisfy everybody. No. That's not going to happen. You know, no. not at one time have to happen. But if you disagree with it, well, still have that joy. You don't go ahead with your life. Don't let it ruin you. Because it, it, he said unprofitable, uh, you do stuff like that. You, you got grief because what? They're going to mess you up in the long run. Yeah. So that's, that's do it with joy, you know. That's right. That's right. And you know, I like that. But that's a good point, Tom. You know what I like, too? I, I take this, this position, too, is that anytime there's any type of uh, decision that's made, I always tell, I always share this with the deacons, we got to be able to articulate why we took that position. Yeah, that's right. That's that, that why when somebody asks you, I can explain to you why we did that. Right now, now, even if at the end of the day, you know, you and that person, right, may not agree, may see eye to eye, at least you was able to explain versus I did that, get over. <laughs> that don't work real well, does it? I did that, get over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to show up anyway on Sunday, get over it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you got you to be able to articulate your position on why we did that. That's why a lot of times when I, that's why a lot of times I give y'all handouts to explain why we came up with that decision. So y'all can understand how they get to, how they get to point A to point Z. What was the rationale, right? What were, what, what, what were, they, what were they constantly trying to ponder? Because not only does it communicate, it shows transparency, but it shows that your leadership is critically thinking what every move they're trying to make, right? Yeah, go ahead, Brother John. Oh. So my question is more yeah. like, so my question is more uh, back to the um, leadership, like the roles of leaders. Yeah. So growing up in, I would say more like a Pentecostal, like hard in church back home. Yeah. A lot of times when people wanted to, the members of the church wanted to criticize leadership, there was one verse they used to throw around a lot. I think it was Psalms 105, verse 15 or something. Well, let me go that real quick. Psalms what? 105, 15. 105.15? Take 10. Let's go to 105.15 song. It says, they never said the whole verse. It just said that first part. It was, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Yeah. So it was basically saying, like, the ones that are anointed, even if the decision seems crazy to you, they're anointed by God. So you might not, you were looking at it through, like, a Christian's eyes, but we're right. anointed, so the decisions we're making is coming from this sense. So it's like, even like you said with the military, there's some times in the military that, decisions that as a regular soldier you'd be like this is we could have done mm -hmm. this the easiest way so like how do we as christians kind of check leadership i won't say check leadership maybe like confront leadership when they're all together in that cahoots and they kind of have a mindset like this right and, and that's, I'm glad you brought up because contextually this right here means physical harm okay because remember what david told his servants, told his men, when they wanted to kill Saul. What did he tell his men? David, you had him in your crosshairs. He was in a cave. Remember, remember what David did? He took a little bit of his, uh, his uh, clothes, he cut it. He said, Saul, I could have had you, right? His men, didn't, they were displeased with that decision. And he said, I'm, no, I refuse, I will not touch God's what? Anointing, right? Remember, remember when Saul died. Saul told his, his sword bearer to kill him. Okay? But he would not do that, would he? Yeah. Okay? And remember, Jonathan got killed in battle. Okay? But Saul ultimately what? He killed himself. Okay? Now, somebody stepped up and said, well, I'm going to go tell David I took care of Saul. I don't know what he was thinking to lay in his mind. He probably thought that he going to get probably like 20 concubines and maybe his own personal chariot and maybe a little a place behind the palace, right? They killed that dude. Because David said, you touch who he's anointed? You're gone. Yeah, they meant that back then. Okay. So, so basically, Brother John, contextually, this is talking about physical harm. Okay? Doesn't mean you can't, you can't question a leader, right? Right? Okay, uh, or, or or potential or asset leader, you know, right? But but basically though, it, it, it's you know, it's it's a way you go about doing things. There's a decorum, right? And like Tom, I, I I like the Thomas point too about when decisions are made, if you disagree, disagree. But you don't have to. 
You don't have to bring it up six months later. Well, I didn't agree with that position. No, I don't, no, that, you don't take that disposition, right? They may, if, if, if three people, if three deacons, and this has happened, and said, look, brother, no, we should we want to do it, we want to do it this way, and not that way, that's fine, as long as, as, long as there's, a, there's a, a, a consensus. Because to me, a consensus is more important than one person. Yes, right. Okay? Because right. a consensus says, we agree collectively, right, the majority, we want to go this way. Okay, go ahead, Sister Watch, you have a, you have a, you have a, you have a mic, let's get you a microphone. I just wanted to say, too, uh, that is one thing that I like here, you know, because at the other congregation I attended, because I didn't have a husband in the church that I could go to and ask what was going on, it was like, for me, I had to just wait until I heard it through the grapevine of what was actually going on. I and heard so, it through the grapevine. Yeah. And so, <laughs> you know, you can't trust the grapevine all the no. time. But um, I will say here, you know, yeah. we can ask, we can go to you or the deacons or, who, you know, and ask, you know, why you all made that decision and, you know, get an answer. Yeah. But uh, in this scripture, I will say, uh, to me, the purpose of this scripture is that we as members of this congregation or, or any congregation that we should be uh, a blessing and not a pain to our spiritual leaders. So that's what mm -hmm. that scripture is telling me. Mm -hmm. that's, part, that's definitely part of it, yeah. Yeah. That, that's part, that's that's part of it. You know, and, and, I, I, and let me say this too. Any spiritual leader who desires, remember, remember what, remember what um, Paul told Timothy in chapter 3. Any woman who's been leading has to what? They have to first have desire. If you don't want to do it, you wasting your time, right? Be up here. <laughs> Y'all made me sick. <laughs> that's not that's not biblical. Yeah, and now you and then you took the air out of the whole church, right? Right, Sister Powell. Right. That, that, now now Sister Teresa, she over there talking about well, I don't want to sing now. Cause look, he like he got frogs in his mouth. <laughs> yeah. No, oh absolutely not. Yeah, but, but you know what? It also has a negative effect, right? A negative effect, right? You know? Unprofitable, yeah. Yeah, Sister Mayfield said use the word unprofitable. That's right. That's right. Okay, thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Yeah, so, but you know, we, we, we got to do it in love. We got we to, we you know, and that's why, you know, anybody who wants to lead, you know, you, you are signing up to be inconvenienced at times. You're signing up, you know, so sometimes where not every member may, may like the ground you walk on, right? That's okay. Because in the, the day, you're not, you're not trying to please them. You're trying to please God. Yeah? But you don't take the attitude. You don't go tell somebody, like, if somebody, don't, if somebody don't care for you, right? Well, I ain't trying. Yeah? But, you know, sometimes I see that, I've seen that happen. You know, some leaders don't talk, some leaders won't talk to certain people. I see that happen in church. I walk by it. He walked right past and say anything. Then he went straight to the other person, starts to the other person. And I had a good look, family. And a good look. So, but yeah, we definitely got to make sure we, we be a blessing. And, our, and let me say this too our leaders need to be a blessing to the church too. Amen. Our leaders have to be a blessing to the church as well. Okay. All right. Uh, verse 18. What does verse 18 say? Yeah. Pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience in all things we're to live honestly. Amen. Yeah. yeah. And, and we should pray for one another. We should pray not just for our leaders. We should pray for our brothers, our sisters, our young people. When the church has this interdynamic prayer focus, I believe that what you're doing is everybody is not looking just on them, on me. I'm looking at you, and I'm looking at you, and I'm looking at you, and you, and you, and you, and here we go. Oh, y'all. Oh, y'all, <laughs> oh, right? When you have that kind of, and then, and then when that sister's praying for that sister, right? And I'm going to tell you when the church gets real special, when the church is awesome, is when before it gets to the prayer list, 
because they know each other so well, they're already praying. The prayer list is trying to catch up. That's when you got, that's when you got something special, fam. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you something, too, about... You, you missed what she said? Oh, let's get your microphone since this time. There you go. Can you, can you repeat that? Oh, this, this is for CUTV. Go ahead, sir. I was just saying that on, on our prayer group that we have, how we start praying for others before we even get here, mm. on our little ladies prayer thing we have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you need that you need that Did you get that, Sister Retta? Yeah, you ain't. Basically, what she's saying is that that's what the, the ladies ministry, ladies ministry do. They're always they're praying for each other even before they get here, right? They're they're thinking about one another even before they get here for, for study, right? You know, what, what, makes, what, what makes true fellowship, what I'm talking about what really kind of makes fellowship to be more potent is the fact that when there's a genuine love for each other, right? And, what, and, and one of the things I have grown in is that I can disagree with you and just forget about it. Yeah, when I was 20 years ago, I disagree with you. You try to hug, nigga, nigga, don't hug on me. We, we still, I'm still mad at you. <laughs> yeah. But I had to learn. That's not how you do things, right? And now, you know, it's like we disagree. I don't care about it. Well, well, well some, some, some brother said such, 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 he, it's like he disrespected you. I ain't see it like that. And if he did, I don't care. I'm not going to hold things week to week to week to week. What helps me to preach the way I do by God's grace is that. I, I, go, I go unburdened. I go light. So the Holy Spirit can fill me up. I don't, I don't want to be having no strife and grudges on me. I got a grudge, you know. Bad at Cecil because Cecil over at the catfish and I got the ribs. <laughs> and I'm mad at Cecil on Sunday because he ate my food, right? No. You don't do stuff like that. Right? Yeah. yeah. You know, so... I have learned, you know, to, to, to do better. And, and the reason why I said that, because leaders have to grow too. And, we, and, like, and like we give each other the time to grow, let your leaders also give them space to grow. Amen. Right? right? Brother George, 30 years down there, or 40 years, I think, down there now at Eastside. Brother uh, uh, Ivory, over 25-something years at, at Waco, right? But their church gave them room to grow. Amen. You got to give them room to grow, family. Like we do for each other, right? Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, and, and I like this too. It says, for we trust we have a good conscience. What does that mean, family, to have a good conscience? In the guidance. Yeah. In truth. Yeah. Blameless, right. Don't be perfect. Right? Right? Because one thing I like about what God talked about Job, he said Job was what? He was justified. He was perfect. Right? But, but that perfect in that Hebrew basically means he was morally blameless. You know? Doesn't mean that, that Job never ever did it in his life. Right? But, but he was someone who was consistently righteous. God wants us to be consistently righteous, family. Okay? You don't, don't try to say, oh, I didn't sin, I didn't messed up my whole entire portfolio of, of righteous living. No. God expects us to fall down. Right? But that's why he gave us repentance for family. That's why we have repentance. Okay? Yes, sir. Let's get, let's get you. <laughs> this is one of the most interesting verses uh, in Hebrews because, as we know, we don't know who the Hebrew writer is. No. People try to say Paul, but there's no internal evidence. But here, after he's just talked about uh, obeying those to have uh, the rule over us, what does he say? Pray for us. Yeah. You know, and it leads me to think that this person was uh, a leader in some capacity mm -hmm. uh, somewhere, and just out of the blue, he just says, pray for us, mm -hmm. for we must have a good conscience in all things to live uh, honestly. And I just think that's uh, interesting because he's written this whole book, and 
people are still guessing and arguing about it today. Mm. Who, or who wrote this book? Right, this right. powerful book, right. but, but God intended for it to be anonymous, right, for whatever right. his reason was. Right, yeah. right, right. And, and, and I would also no. say one other thing yeah, yeah, yeah. about leaders. You know, we should never be privy sometimes to all of the information that goes into uh, some of the decisions that you all make. Mm -hmm. Some of that needs to stay obviously uh, with you all oh, so yeah. that sometimes we may never know why uh, we, you decided what you did. And we have to, by faith, be good with that. No, we yeah. might, that's just like when me and my wife was was having things and we come to the children and say, well, hey, kids, we're going to do this. You know, we may not tell them all of the reasons. We say this is just something we've got to do. And, you know, you really don't need to know. We protect right. our kids from a lot of things because they don't need to know. Maybe they can't handle it or maybe it's none of your business. This involves another member and this ain't your business. And, but this is something that we as a leadership feel that is consistent with our philosophy of ministry or I, whatever. I, I'm smiling because are you calling us children, Brother, brother, brother Galva? <laughs> 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 I'm mad with you, Dad. Kind of I know, I know. I'm mad with you, Dad. I'm mad with you. Let's get some the back to the bike. <laughs> and I also, another she, another she. No. <laughs> I also believe that in good conscience, you show no partiality. Yeah, you yeah. treat everybody the same. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. You don't say I'm not going to speak to her today because, and then you walk past her and then you speak to the other. That's not a good conscience. Oh yeah. Or you should your conscience should not be good. It should eat you up and say I should have spoke to that lady. Today. Right, right, right. And sometimes too, you know, there, there. What happens is that because there's a lack of understanding of what the what leadership did. And so some member will go out and tell another church what happened. And it gets back to leadership saying, well, well, they, they, didn't, they didn't like how you handled this situation. Well, I, my thing is this. Well, I, I'm sorry they feel that way, but it's not my job to, to be a leader at their congregation. It's my job to be a leader at this congregation. And so, and so what I mean by that, because of autonomy and because of the situation on the ground here, we have to respond to the facts here. Right, and so yeah, it's, but it's amazing how people get back to you and say, "Yeah, they heard about this and such, and they, and they they heard y'all didn't do anything about it." Mm -hmm. Okay, well, well, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go call that brother and say, "Brother, brother so and so, we did this." <laughs> I don't care about that. Yeah, because, but 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 so that it happens though, right? And and it's sad because what you want to do is you want to tell people, again, you're not going to stop all that. You just gotta you just gotta continue to keep communicating and say, "Hey, if people want to know something, we'll tell you." But in some cases, some things are real sensitive, right? Like, like you know, when people ask for assistance, we don't tell, we don't tell, we don't give a list of names who ask for assistance. Yeah. We give y'all a number. Yeah, we want to know who. No, nah, we ain't give no names. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's that's locked in the grave forever, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? We want to know who you counsel. We ain't gonna tell you everybody we counsel. Mm -hmm. Now, some members may know because they talk to other people, right? But we ain't gonna tell you everybody who counsel and, and tell you the detail. We ain't need a transcript. Oh, no, they don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't even give the redacted version. <laughs> Go, that's right. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, yeah I, I know we got to get ready to close out, yeah, but, yeah. but that old saying, let your conscience be your guide. Yeah. Now, my a good conscience, if I mistreat you, yeah. I'm going to come back and correct that. That's right. But I don't have that good, good, good conscience. I'm not going to come back and correct anything. Right. But it, that's why you live honestly by having a good conscience. That's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Mm. Hold on, who, who, who is that? That wasn't Sister Mary Jones. Who is that? Yeah, that was some. That was some other Jones family. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, that's that. But, but that's what you know. That's what church is all about, right? Like you know, you know, you know. One of the things I like to tell people who I counsel is that you know, when I you know, I try to you know say for some time I, I may forget, but I try to say. What are we talking about? It ain't gonna go beyond you and me. My wife don't even know the people I counsel, right? And sometimes she'll ask me, say, how they got a session go? She just asked how the session go. She won't ask me no, because I'm sure I know I'm not gonna tell her. I said, no, uh-uh. Y'all don't have dinner time? Do you need, do you need, do you need me to assist you, sister, with him? Do you need me to assist you with him? <laughs> Get you. <laughs> So, so great.
great lesson today, family. Any lasting questions or thoughts before we close out? Did we miss anything? Do we have something we want to talk about? We're going to, we're going to hold, we're going to return back on verse number 18, and then we'll move on. We're almost done with Hebrews. We're almost done with Hebrews. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so with that being said, this Sunday is going to be Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Um, we, we've got some things that are going to, we're going to be doing Sunday that we're excited about. Uh, we're, we're, we're the CU Singers, amen. I'm looking at the CU Singers. I'm looking at Sister White over there. The CU Singers, they are set on, uh, on Sunday. And then uh, we're going to have uh, some treats for the kids and the activity, too, for the kids after service. We're looking forward to that also as well. And, um, you know, and, and, you know, one of the things, too, I want to say, um, you know, that I, I do know that Easter, uh, the word itself to some people, don't like to say it because uh, uh, there, there are some who believe about his, his paganistic origins and stuff like that. I would, just, I would just venture to tell you, let's not let terminology, right, be more important than people. Okay, what I mean by that is that, that people don't see it like that today, right? It, it, you know, and if you want to call Easter Resurrection Sunday, that's fine. Nobody, nobody cares, right? But I know, but go ahead, what are you going to say? Uh, technically, is it every Sunday? It is. It is, yeah. It is, yeah. It is. But, 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 the, but unfortunately, unfortunately, the world, they come out for Easter, right? And, and they, don't, they don't know the, the paganistic you know, somewhat origins and stuff like that. And so that's why I tell people you can embrace both names because, you, because the thing is you want to be able to take the opportunity. It's another Sunday, a different Sunday to what? To give the gospel, right, right? But at the same time, though, you know, you can teach too about it when people ask you questions too. So, but I just don't want people to get so overly caught up in it and get so dogmatic that, oh, we, you know, you, you should call them. Calm down, people. It, it, it ain't that serious, right? It ain't that serious, right? We can still view both names, okay? All right, so. All right, so we're going to be doing that this Sunday, okay? And then um, we have some other things in the calendar, too. Uh, let us not forget about we have a, a, a parents' huddle coming, and uh, we have another, another huddle. We have a youth huddle coming also as well. So those on the calendar, those will be blasted out. The parent huddle is going to be on the 11th. And then the youth huddle is going to be on the 4th. So um, those huddles are very important. You know, I told the parents before, you know, we've already, we're, in the, the, we're already in the mix with Sunday school. Uh, I want to give a thanks again for the parents and for the teachers and everybody who's involved with all of Sunday school, from the adults back to our children's student ministry. But I want to also tell you, say, stay encouraged because... Our Sunday school, we're starting from this level, but we want to slowly scale, right? We're going to get there. God's going to give us the increase, right? And then, and then once we get that Sunday thing right, then eventually we'll get that Wednesday thing right, okay? But we got to be patient, okay, and let God continue to lead the way what we're trying to do, okay? Uh, but I want to thank all those involved as well, okay? Um, in the youth huddle, we want to do some activities for the youth this year, and we want to also try to expose our youth to some things this year. And so that's why that youth huddle is important. I told those who were single, I said, we're trying to do some things for married people. I have not forgot about singles. You're on my radar also as well, okay? I know that the church has needs, and the church is diverse. And so, you know, just because there's couples here in the, in the congregation doesn't mean we only solely focus on them. I want to be a place where everybody can belong to something and know that they are valued, okay? You're already valued anyway because we love everybody here at Central Union. But we're still trying to do some things so we can continue to build people up. Um, and, I, and I believe in that family. I really do, okay? So we're going to definitely be doing the youth uh, huddle and the parent huddle. And then also, too, um, I, didn't, I haven't talked to Sister Poole, but the next teacher huddle is going to be in person. It will be here in the building. Okay, I got to get that date. All right, that's all I have. Oh, first Sunday. First Sunday will not be on the 7th. Okay, 
Uh, Hillsboro has, has said they're going to have it on the 14th, the second Sunday, because they don't want nobody on the highway of the, of the week of the eclipse. Okay? So, and that's going to be very, very, that's a, I, I, that's, a, that's a great idea because there's going to be a lot of traffic going on. People are going to be going crazy over the eclipse, right? And I want y'all to be at home, safe, watching Netflix. Not a joke. <laughs> I want y'all safe and at home, amen? So, so I appreciate them coming up to that decision and uh, letting us know that, okay? Also, too, um, uh, real quick, the first Sunday in August will not be at the Church of Christ in Marlin. It's going to be at another facility, okay? So I just wanted to let you know that right now. I don't have all the details of the facility, but I'll let you know. But, it, but it, this facility has good size, and, it's, and it won't be at the building, right? And, and, and preferably, they'll have a great AC. Amen. Amen. All right? So, uh, and, and, uh, we'll, and we'll be good there, okay? All right. Prayer. Let's see here. I think some of these, yeah, okay. So let me read this list here because this is, hey, Brother Irvin, this is a duplicate, right? This is one, 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 one or two? Okay, okay, all right. All right, so Sister Mary Jones says, pray for my brother-in-law, brother-in-law Bobby. He was diagnosed with stage four brain cancer and lung cancer. Oh, bless sorry. Uh, we're going to keep you know, him in prayer. And I saw that. I didn't get a chance to, to respond uh, on the uh, chat, but, I, but, uh, but he's in my prayers, okay? And, and uh, definitely, I uh, uh, hate to hear that, Tommy, about your, about your brother. So definitely keep, keep him in prayer. Sister Vivian says, asking the church family to please pray for me going to have a test tomorrow. Pray that the results come back good. Thank you. We're going to pray for you, Sister Vivian. If you're watching tonight, we're going to pray for you. Tashima says, please pray for my health. I'm having lower back pain. We're going to pray for you, Sister. Uh, does not know that. Uh, Mama P, please pray for my health. Let's give you a little update. So I took my mother to her, uh, her uh, another checkup appointment, and they put her in a boot now. So now she's in a boot. She's out of splint, she's out of the wrap, she's in the boot, and it's healing. Doctor said it's healing good, but she has to stay off of it, right? And so, and, and so, and, and uh, I was uh, teasing her today. She's probably watching. We were coming back in the house, and I said, all this hassle, well, I tell you what, we're going to have to definitely stay off this foot, ain't we? <laughs> and she said, yeah, I ain't going to this again. Amen. So, so uh, we love you, Mama. We're going to pray for you. Sister Dahlia, she's asking for prayers for the Salise family. They have lost a sibling. Oh, Lord. She was not only a sister, but a mother and a grandmother also as well. So, Dahlia, we're going to pray for your requests also as well. All right, family, who in the building need prayer that we miss? Go ahead, sister. We lost a cousin. Oh, okay. Pray for my family. We lost a cousin. I didn't know her, but my mom and them knew her, so they are all going down to the funeral. Okay. So just pray for them. And... We will be traveling this weekend, going oh, to oh. Oklahoma. Gotcha, sister. Okay. I'd like to stand in the gap for Sister Janet, uh, also uh, Sister Gabby, and uh, Nora and Zante. Uh, yeah, mother. yeah. For, uh, no, yeah. So uh, Nora and, and Zante were going to be here Sunday. But uh, Nora's mother she, uh, is sick. She, I think she got ill. So uh, please keep them uh, in, in prayer. I need to text uh, uh, Zante tomorrow and uh, let them know, and Nora, and let them know that we're thinking about them. Okay. All right. Who else need prayer? Yes, sister. Let's get, let's get sister Mary a mic. A mic. I just want to ask for continued prayers. I feel a lot better. But I'm here to tell you that the local honey worked better than the allergy pills. I went home Sunday and did it, and I started feeling better instantly. I should have left the allergy pills alone. Yeah. But I also want to ask for uh, prayers for our travel. We will be leaving Friday morning, going to the national lectureship. Yay! All right now. All right now. Well, you know what? Since, since, since you bragging over there, sister. <laughs> You, you, you better take plenty of pictures <laughs> and, and, and send to your preacher. <laughs> I'm with that. Did you have something, sis? You have something? Okay. Um, I, oh, go ahead, sis. Yeah. Is, is the green light on? Yes. Sir, okay, okay, go ahead. I just like to ask for prayers on the behalf of my, for my beautician. Okay. She'll be traveling. She lost her grandmother. 
So um, she'll be traveling. And also for Kalajuwon, who is suffering, suffering with um, a root canal, he got up in the seat and, uh. and said that, um, he said, um, could you tell me what tooth is, is bothering you? He says the 13th mo molar and the third molar. Oh. He said, oh my, I said, it sounds like he did his homework. <laughs> but uh, sure enough, it was his 13th molar mm. and it needed a, a root canal. Mm. So we're having to run around and try to find a, a doctor to do his root canal. Oh, uh, okay. Because it's over $1,300 uh -huh. that I don't have. I but know about anyway. that since I'm still dealing with that. <laughs> right. But uh, also, I need a special prayer for him. Okay. Because he's going through some things, mm -hmm. and um, I don't want to kick him out. Mm -hmm. But he's uh, very getting very out of hand, mm. and um, and my heart is heavy where he's concerned. Mm -hmm. So just keep him in prayer. Right. We'll do, sister. That I can deal with that mm -hmm. because I've never had one like that. Right. Right. And I can't, but God can, mm -hmm. and I have to let him, because I need your prayers, mm -hmm. and I need God to Amen. help me to get through it. We're going we're gonna to pray for you, sister. Thank you. Amen. Janelle, you have something? Yeah. If I could have you guys pray for my friend Daniel this um, past weekend, he lost one of his friends. Mm. Um, and then if I could have you guys say some prayers for me, um, I personally feel like I'm undergoing some tests and God did put some things on my heart, mm -hmm. but I got hit with a bit of slothfulness. So I wasn't doing what I needed to do. And now there are situations before me that since I didn't do what I needed to do, they're much more harder to go through. Mm -hmm. So now if, because I was a bit lazy, if you guys could pray that I have the endurance, the strength and the wisdom that I need because now there's nothing but tests before me and they define my character to myself at this point now. That's a lot of internalization there, Sister, <laughs> sister Jalea. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good thing when young people be processed like that. That's all right, Sister. We already knew, we, we already knew, we already knew you was wicked smart, but you know. <laughs> yeah, all right. Anybody else need, need prayer? Yes, sir. I want to ask for continued prayers for my daughter. <clears throat> uh, she's been in, out, in and out of the emergency room. Mm. You know, they've uh, talked about inducing labor. And uh, this past Saturday, we had a mini family reunion. Mm. Family came in from East Coast, West Coast, North and South to uh, have a baby shower for my daughter. That's all right. And uh, she loved it. She enjoyed it. After everybody was finally gone, she looked at me. She said, take me to the emergency room. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and so uh, they sent her back home again. But uh, if, if you would please pray for her because uh, she's been in that emergency room probably six, eight times in the last oh, three man. weeks. Oh, man. That's all right. So you got to be tired of that. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to keep it in prayer, Glenn, for sure. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Um, anybody else need prayer? Yeah. Okay. 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 Go ahead, Sister Loretta. Just asking for traveling grace for my granddaughters who will okay. be going back home today. Okay. Tonight. Okay. You see your nephew Joe? Okay. You know you confused me last time, I think, when you said Joe. Oh. Yeah. But I got your nephew Joe, okay. Not husband Joe, nephew Joe. Okay, got gotcha. you. Okay. Are we good? All right. All right. Shall we pray? Precious Father, once again, Lord, we want to say thank you, Father. Lord, this Wednesday, Father, was special because of your people. Uh, we appreciate their dialogue, their, their discourse today. 
We appreciate the comments for our Lord and also just the wisdom for our Lord that was interjected, Father, in our, our class today. We thank you, Father, for those here with us in fellowship. We thank you, Father, for those with us on the live stream. We thank you, Father, Lord, just for your son. You see him once again, Father, Lord, to die for us. Uh, we know, Father, Lord, we, de we deserve, Father, your wrath. But, Father, Lord, you poured your wrath on your son instead of us, Father. We want to say thank you, Father, Lord. We're not worthy of that, Father. But yet, Father, Lord, you still sent your son, Father, Lord, for the ultimate sacrifice that we today as your people could have a way for the lift in the afterlife, for salvation, Father. We want to say thank you, Father. We, we had a thousand hills. We couldn't say it loud enough, Father. And we had 10,000 hands and 10,000 tongues. We couldn't say thank you enough, Father, for all what you did, Father. Father, Lord, we, put this, we have this list, Father, all these different names. The, Father, these lists represent different situations, different ordeals, different cases, Father, different circumstances. But, Father, here's the blessing that we know about you. We lay all them at your feet today. Each name that I read, Father, Lord, you know what they're going through. You know what they need, Father. And, Father, no, we know, Lord, that you have control of the outcome. We're asking, Father, Lord, a blessed outcome. An outcome, Father, Lord, that, that Father, that they will bring forth blessed results. Whatever they ask, Father, I ask you, Lord, that you can be the captain of their situation and the God of their moment, Father. Now, Father, Lord, go with us, Father. Lord, help us not, not just on this Wednesday, Father. But, Father, Lord, we have Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and Sunday left for this week. We pray, Father, Lord, that you will bless us each day. Until we meet again, Father, even though, Father, we know that this Sunday, Father, Lord, is like any other Sunday. Because, Father, Lord, we know that even though the world may set aside this day and see your son's resurrection as something different, Father, every Sunday we get together, Father, we know that your son rose and died for us. Father, so we want to say to you once again, thank you. Thank you for Calvary, Father. Thank you, Father, for the ultimate sacrifice. And thank you, Father, Lord, for loving us, Father, Lord, not just to wake us up this morning, but also to carry us, Father, up until this day. Anybody in here, Father, Lord, who, who may have a holy petition or request, it, but didn't say anything at all, Father, we want to also put them at your feet, Father. Anybody, Father, Lord, who may be sick and shut in, Father, we have some, Father, Lord, who, uh, who may be sick and shut in. Those, Father, Lord, who may just came out the hospital, we pray for them, Father. Those, Father, Lord, who are going through some things, Father, Lord, maybe they live in the shadows because they haven't shared it with nobody, Father. We pray for them as well, Father. And, Father, Lord, also, we want to put a prayer for this country. Father, this country needs you, Father. These people need you, Father, though. We as a people need you, Father. We pray, Father, for this nation. We pray, Father, for all the leaders of this nation. And even though, Father, Lord, we know there's a lot of foolishness going on, Father, we still pray, Father, for all those who are leaders, Father. Now, Father Lord, we ask you, Lord, to be with this congregation and all the congregations part of the body of Christ. We ask all these things in Christ's name, pray in Jesus' name together. Amen. 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 Well, this is Miss family.